During the 70s, Bobby Douglas could throw a football farther than any quarterback in the NFL. But he was best known for throwing the Bears game plan out the window. Douglas is the subject of this week's Mavericks and Misfits segment. And here's your host, Joe Theismann. One of the classic images in pro football is the tall, cool quarterback dropping back in the pocket. But take it from me, quarterbacks don't have to conform to that classic image to get the job done. With his cannon arm, Bobby Douglas seemed tailor-made to play quarterback. But Bobby did things off the cuff. In 1972, for example, he rushed for nearly 1,000 yards. Bobby Douglas made things happen. And while what happened wasn't always good, it was always unpredictable. Bobby Douglas was a professional quarterback who often resembled an amateur magician. Even though his sleight of hand was a bit wobbly, his tricks were astonishing. Whenever Chicago's game plan threatened to disappear in a puff of smoke, Douglas had a knack for pulling a rabbit from his hat. As a rookie in 1969, Douglas wore number 14 and boasted a rocket-launching left arm. I threw a ball over 90 yards uh, a couple times, and uh, I really think I could throw a ball 100 yards if I got the right throw off. My statistics were great in some games and horrible in others. I was a very up-and-down quarterback. It made a big deal out of, of course, because I was controversial and uh, was one of those people that the media liked to try to find something different about. While Douglas could muscle the football, he never could master the playbook. And during his rookie year, the Bears took unusual measures to improve his signal calling. Jim Dooley was a coach at that time. He would uh, write a play on a piece of paper and stick it to the guard's hand, and the guard would run in, and we'd hold up in front of Bobby Douglas so he'd read the play, then we'd go ahead with the play. We had a million plays, it seemed like, so I had to eventually get him typed on a... Uh, on a piece of cardboard and then we they had this wrist thing that you put on your wrist and I'd have a, a cardboard on the top and a cardboard on the bottom. But despite cue cards, Douglas was never able to get his lines right and this put him on the wrong side of head coach Abe Gibron. Bobby! Douglas! Douglas! So many times he would call the wrong play but he would make it work. Although Douglas stood tall in the pocket, he rarely stood there for long. He was a player who never lost his nerve, even though he frequently lost his helmet. Douglas was a rugged individualist who approached every carry as if it were a wild waterfront brawl. I'm a person who likes to try to do everything myself, and uh, I was probably not as patient as a quarterback as I should have been. It's always been hard for me to count on somebody else to do something. I enjoyed running, I really did. I had good balance and I could take the punishment. I could run over people once in a while and, and, and basically had pretty good instincts. Douglas gained 968 yards, more than any quarterback has ever gained. The reason he did it is Bobby go out there on that option and he couldn't decide whether he wanted to pitch it to the back or keep it himself. In 1972, Douglas's 968 rushing yards established an NFL single-season record for quarterbacks that is unlikely to be broken. He could run with the ball, but what the hell anybody can run with a football. I always felt he could have been probably one of the all-time great strong side safeties, uh, a linebacker, uh, a tight end, but he wanted to be a quarterback. They never really came to me and said, look, we might have to move you to tight end. They wanted me as their quarterback. I mean, I threw the ball well. You know, I hit the people when they were open. But in game situations, when you're playing against the Minnesota Vikings and you get two and a half seconds to throw, I don't care who you are, you're not going to look good. Douglas rarely looked good when dropping back. But when running forward, he was in a class by himself. For seven seasons, Chicago Bears fans and opponents never knew what Bobby Douglas was going to do next. 
And neither did Bobby Douglas.